Today's video is all about low sugar, healthy cereal. So if you're a cereal lover like me, make sure you watch. I'm gonna share some amazing recipes you can make at home. So this video was inspired by my personal love for cereal. If you've followed my channel for a while or any of my social media, I talk about it all the time. It's like my favorite thing, it's my vice. I could have cereal for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and I'm sure I'm not alone in this, but it is highly processed, which we're gonna get into in the video and how many amazing alternatives there are. So I'll get into all those details and share a lot of great tips. I will definitely link everything I have below, even some of these that I know are in my little containers. I'm literally showing you what's in my cabinet, but I'll make sure to link them below. All the products I'm talking about here are from Thrive Market. You guys know Thrive Market is my favorite place to get all of my superfoods, my household supplies, basically because it's a one-stop shop. You can literally go on there and find whatever you want. You can filter through whatever your diet category is, which I think is a really cool feature personally because I know that like your household can include so many different variations, especially now it's almost like a cultural shift where everyone's like either vegan or vegan or paleo or keto or you know, I'm low FODMAP, whatever you wanna search, that's really cool and you can find it on there. I like to search by like organic, non-GMO, vegan, and you can save different things that you like or you know, different things that you always wanna come back to. They also have a cool new feature where you can search black owned brands and businesses on there, which I think is super cool to support. And when you just have that filter, you can go on and see if these are some of the regular foods I'm eating anyway, why not just support black owned brands? So I really like that about Thrive Market. And if you guys use my link below, you can get a free gift up to $22 in value with your annual membership. So the way Thrive Market works, it's a membership based site. So you can either go monthly, which makes it $9.95 a month, or you can go yearly, which I prefer because it's only $5 a month. So you end up saving money there. Okay, so first I wanna quickly talk about processed food because you guys know I love to explain a little bit about why I recommend certain things, but I think that the term processed is thrown around so often and a lot of people might not know what it is. It's almost like you know that it's bad and you know that like packaged foods are processed, but what does it actually mean? So technically processed food is any time of food is not in its natural state. So any kind of manipulation. So there are actually a lot of different processed foods, but they're not all created equal. There's a lot of different levels to processing, I like to say. Technically, olive oil is processed, anything like tomato sauce is processed. You can't fully eat like 100% unprocessed. That would be a really difficult life. I mean, if you're making your own olive oil, kudos to you, but that's definitely hard. But you can avoid heavily processed foods. So for the sake of this video, I just want you guys to know I'm referring to like really heavily processed foods and cereal happens to be one of them. So I really want anyone who loves cereal to pay attention to this because when you understand how it's made, I personally think it's motivation and I'm gonna share some really amazing tips on you know, little things you can do at home to make your own. So when you process food, more of the heavily processed foods, it's basically heating, getting rid of a lot of the nutrients, you're getting rid of a lot of the fiber. So it's really tricky when you're grocery shopping for food because obviously you can read what the ingredients are, like that step one, you might know, okay, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna get anything that has like a bunch of chemicals or things I can't pronounce. But where it gets tricky for cereal is that sometimes you can just see that it's like, you know, 100% whole grain, or it can say that it uses like wheat and um, quinoa or whatever, but it doesn't tell you on the package how it's processed and how heavily it's processed and what that does to the food. So technically you are getting, you know, quinoa or strawberries or whatever it says on the package, but you're really not getting all of the nutrients and health benefits that comes with that and the process of processing it actually makes it very unhealthy there's one specific process called extruding so it's an extrusion process this is uh, very common with like puffed cereal but basically this is how you form shapes with different cereals so let's say you're getting like that puff shape there's an extrusion process which like heats it and kind of forms this dough and then shapes it and it also ends up making the cereal not brown as much. And I know a lot of times consumers are like, you know, swayed by the color or shape or look of something, especially children. And we think like if it browns, that means it goes bad, but really that's just natural food. Like natural food isn't supposed to last that long or not get brown. Like a banana can go brown in a few days. So this extrusion process can even make it lower in fat. It can make it brown less, it, you know, turns it into shapes. 
but it heavily processes it. And the actual process of extruding can create these kind of neurotoxins that can be really damaging for your body. So now let's get into cereal, which is one of the most heavily processed foods. So there's obviously different kinds of cereal, but just in general, kind of how the basics work with cereal is you start with either corn or a grain, and then you heat it and break it down and cook it with syrups, artificial flavorings and colorings. And then it's like shaped into, you know, whatever kind of cereal shape you want. Now, the artificial sugars that go into it, this is actually an interesting process because a lot of times they're added to create a coating around the cereal so that it stays crunchy. So when you see a cereal that stays crunchy longer, it probably has that sugar coating because it's separating, you know, the whatever's left of the grain and the milk that you're having. So that's also another thing that's added to it. Of course, the sugar is added because sugar is addictive and we don't even realize sometimes that flavoring, like a, spe a specific flavor that you have with food and how that can impact us. On top of this, as if there needs to be more, this process of extrusion, processing, you know, heating, all of this ends up breaking down the fiber in the cereal so much that you're just not getting a nutritional meal. So look, I've just explained a lot of bad things about cereal. Am I still going to eat it sometimes? Yes. Like, will I still get a craving sometimes? Yes. But the important part about this is to not have it be your go-to meal. You know, when I was younger, I mean, you know, my parents were great and healthy and cared about us, but we didn't know better. So I ate cereal every single day growing up and like even, you know, into my 20s, I would like have it for dinner some nights. But now that I know how bad it is, I've had to figure out different ways to kind of get my cereal fixed. So. Now let's get into the fun part of all the different cereal alternatives we have. I'm going to share some brands that I actually really like that are super clean and raw and, you know, not processed. And then I'm going to show you how to make a little DIY cereal, which is so easy and I swear by. And I've shared this a lot on social and on Instagram and I've seen so many people reply in stories that love it. So I think you guys are really going to like these. So first let's get into how to make your own DIY cereal because it's just so yummy. I'm going to share, these are only some of the things I couldn't fit everything in my cabinets. It's almost like for this reason, because I love combining them together. So basically what makes cereal, I think like so satisfying is like, you've got your milk. I like almond milk, coconut, milk, any plant milk I'm a fan of. And then you've got that crunch factor and it's just fun to eat it. Like even the process of eating cereal, I've even been one to like cut up fruit and put it with almond milk and eat it which don't knock it till you try it. It's weirdly satisfying, but you can literally take any combination of like seeds, nuts, goji berries, like raw coconut, you know, you can get it shredded. I prefer unsweetened because you're going to add your own sweetness. So definitely get it unsweetened, mix it into a bowl and literally make your own DIY cereal. I do find that using smaller things makes it feel a little more like cereal. So if you want to either chop it yourself or get maybe like, almond, you know, shreds or, you know, things that are a little bit smaller versus like putting whole macadamia nuts or like whole walnuts. You could even crush walnuts into your hand. Some of my favorite go-tos to add in for crunch, I love adding in cacao nibs. So cacao in general is one of my absolute favorite superfood ingredients. It's incredible for you. It's so high in antioxidant. So it's just such a no brainer to add into recipes. Remember that this is the natural form of chocolate and it actually tastes super bitter on its own because chocolate as like the chocolate cacao plant doesn't have any sugar. So just picking these up and eating them on your own, you probably, you might not like because it's a little bitter, but adding these into cereal just adds a little bit of crunch and you get the other flavors and you're getting so many antioxidants. So cacao nibs are a must. I'll link below the brand since these are in this little Tupperware. I also love to add in goji berries. I've shared this before. This is really the only dried fruit that I like because you can't really find goji berries fresh and they're so packed with antioxidants. Normally with fruit, I prefer to get all the water content and kind of eat it in its natural state, but goji berries are an incredible one to add in if you want a little bit of sweetness and they're not overly sweet. Um, I also always love, as I mentioned, adding coconut on the top. It just gives it such a yummy, like fresh flavor adds a lot of healthy fats and healthy fats are so important for your hair, for your skin. And of course I loaded up with cinnamon. You could add pumpkin pie spice. You could add nutmeg. I actually prefer usually just cinnamon for cereal for whatever reason, but that's totally up to your flavor palette. 
And not only are we not getting all of the added sugars and artificial sugar that is going to increase your risk for diabetes type 2, it's going to spike your blood sugar, this can increase your risk for obesity, literally increases mortality rate. Like there's so many bad things that sugar can do. It's really, really not about the weight gain. Yes, that's a negative as well, but we're really talking about health here. So not only are we not adding artificial sugar, we're actually helping balance blood sugar. Cinnamon literally helps you balance your blood sugar. It's great for anyone who's pre-diabetic or diabetic. So just a great preventative one to add to everything, which is why I love adding it to everything. You could add some pumpkin seeds. These are just little individual packs I have, but I will literally throw in whatever I have. I also find pecans to be very underrated. I think people don't think, I usually people think of nuts, like let's say you're like at a gas station. They always only have like almonds and pistachios for whatever reason. I feel like these aren't as popular of a nut, but they're so good. Pecans and macadamia nuts, like you're gonna feel like you're in Hawaii maybe, but it's a very fancy little cereal. And don't forget about these other things that exist that are really good. I also wanted to highlight this, which is Sacha Inchi. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. I discovered this as a nut butter when I was trying a low FODMAP diet, when I was trying to cure SIBO. Don't even get me started on that. But um, this was one of the foods that was approved on there that I could eat. And I really thought it was interesting because I hadn't heard much about it. And it's got a really interesting taste and texture. But I like adding in a variety of foods to my diet. Like I don't like to just stick to one thing. Like even if, like let's say, nuts have omegas. Every single nut has its own benefit and you know its own uniqueness. So kind of exploring different things can be fun. This is unique in that it's really high in protein and low in carb. So it's you know, nine grams of protein for one fourth cup and only five grams of carbs. So if you want one that's a little bit lower carb, you could also add this in. And when you buy nuts and seeds, I would suggest, I mean, I love getting these, like these containers, basically seal them in, you know, <clears throat> they protect them so they last a long time. Just have them all in your cabinet and you can use them for whatever, when you wanna make like nut milk or when you wanna add them into cereal, when you wanna have them as a snack, just having them in bulk makes it so much less expensive and easy to just kind of grab and go. I also wanted to highlight one little recipe that I make sometimes where I cook oatmeal and then I add in other things on top. So maybe cook either half the amount or a regular serving size of oatmeal, you know, put it in the bowl, then add either nut seeds, a little bit of these granola brands that I'm gonna share and get into, and then top it with more plant milk so that it really feels like you're eating cereal. So don't eat it like oatmeal where it's a little bit thicker. Literally treat it like cereal. So this is just another kind of fun warm alternative if you're in the mood for that. And now I just wanna share a few brands that are so amazing when it comes to actual like cereal. I mean, these are granola technically, but you know, I think granola and cereal is all like kind of in the same. So there's certain brands of granola that advertise as healthy, but you know, they have a lot of added sugar and there's something about the word granola that makes you think it's healthier, but don't be fooled because if you look on the back, there still are a lot of added sugars and oils. These three, you guys absolutely have to try. Like I can't say enough good things. I'm obsessed with this brand. This is one by Thrive Market and it's an organic grain-free granola. So this is the pumpkin, uh, they call it pumpkin punch and this is the vanilla cinnamon. I like these specifically because if you also wanna go paleo or grain-free, it like covers it all and it is so good. I mean, technically everything here is grain-free except for the oat, so really this is all grain-free. But the ingredients in this is basically what we're making, but they make it for you. <laughs> Sunflower seeds, pumpkin seeds, maple syrup, unsweetened coconut, almonds, figs, walnuts, cashews, pumpkin puree, pumpkin pie spice, and sea salt. So obviously if you wanted to make something like this, it's a lot more than just throwing things into a bowl. You know, they add a little bit of maple syrup, which I'm totally fine with. They add the pumpkin puree. So that's more of like a, you know, a process to make. And let me tell you, this is the most delicious granola ever. Total grams of sugar is five. So I feel really great about this one. This is a similar one, just obviously more of a vanilla flavor. This is another cereal option that's really incredible. This brand, it's called Go Raw. This one's not grain free, but it's still incredible. So it's just like sprouted buckwheat groats, dates, um, sunflower seeds, sesame seeds, coconut hemp seeds, cacao, vanilla, and sea salt. So as you can see, there are really incredible brands that exist. And honestly, please try these. Like if there's one video where I'm like recommending you to try certain brands, 
I really want you guys to try these, especially these, they're so sweet. You would think, you know, I think they're perfectly sweet. I'm pretty sure all kids would like them. And you don't need to go through all the colorings and processing and additive, and you're not gonna, you know, be at risk for so many other disease states, which sounds intense, but it's true. So I don't like to always you know, make everything seem so daunting, but I also want to be honest. And I think that, you know, sometimes ignorance is bliss, but it's better to know what's actually going on with the food you're putting into your body every day. So that is my spiel on cereal. These are all really incredible alternatives. Again, if, you know, once in a while you're having a processed cereal, it's really not that big of a deal. We're all going to eat unhealthy food at different points in life. But if you are having cereal every day, if you love it, if it's like a staple in your diet, I can't recommend trying these enough. So I hope you guys found this helpful, especially to any other cereal lovers. Again, I will link everything below this video, um, all these things I got from Thrive Market, and I will also put my link for Thrive Market so that you can get up to a $22 gift if you get the annual membership. Please leave any questions below, and I'll see you next time.